Bad News Eats Biafrant as Ejimako reviews what DSS did to Lunam Dekanul in prison. Amid ongoing case against FG. Bad News Eats Biafrant as Ejimako reviews what DSS did to Lunam Dekanul in prison. Amid ongoing case against FG, to my dear listeners, good day from wherever you listen from, can let's stay tuned as I read today's news. In a fresh development, the Department of State Services, DSS, has prevented the legal team of Namdekano the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, I pope from meeting with him, sparking concerns about his access to justice and legal representation. This information was disclosed by Kano's lead counsel, Aloy Yejimako, during a press briefing held in Abuja on September 27, 2024. Ejimako revealed that the DSS actions may signal an indefinite cancellation of all future visits by Kano's legal representatives. He expressed deep concern over the implications of such a move suggesting that it could mark the beginning of complete isolation for the pro Biafra leader, effectively rendering his solitary confinement absolute. According to Lejimako, there is a growing possibility that Kano may not be seen again by his legal team or anyone else for the foreseeable future. The decision by the DSS, Ejimako alleged, is a retaliatory response to an incident that occurred during Kano's most recent court appearance at the Federal High Court in Abuja. Kanu had caused a steal in the courtroom by challenging the impartiality of Justice Bintal Unyako, the presiding judge over his case. The IPOB leader questioned Justice Unyako's ability to provide a fair trial and called for a recusal from the proceedings, citing a lack of confidence in her handling of his case. Kano's protest led to a dramatic turn of event as despite objections raised by the federal government's legal team, Justice Zunya collected to step down from the case. This move was seen as a significant victory for Kano and his defense team. But it has now reportedly triggered a harsh response from the DSS, which Ejimako claims is seeking to punish Kano for what, for what it perceives as an affront to the judiciary. Speaking to reporters, Ejimako stated today, in violation of existing court orders and the constitution, the DSS blocked the legal team of Mazi, Unam Dekanu, from meeting with him at the detention facility. It appears that the DSS has cancelled all future visitations to MNK as a form of retaliation for his actions in court, which led to the recusal of Justice Binta Unyako. A 
Ijimako further lamented the broader consequences of the DSS actions, noting that it amounts to an unlawful denial of Kanu's right to legal representation and a fair trial. He said, What this means is that the DSS, acting on behalf of the federal government, of Nigeria has unlawfully isolated MNK from his lawyers, thus making it solitary confinement absolute. I don't know when next, if ever it may be possible to see MNK again. The latest move by the DSS raises serious questions about the state of Kano's detention and the Nigerian government handling of his case. Kano has been in custody since he was rearrested in June 2021 after fleeing Nigeria in 2017. He faces multiple charges, including treasonable felony for his role in the separatist movement, advocating for the creation of an independent Biafran state. Despite the charges against him, Kano's legal team and supporters have consistently argued that his detention is politically motivated, aimed at silencing his activism and curbing the growing influence of the Biafran independence movement. His lawyers have also pointed out several court rulings, including a judgment by the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which called for Kano's immediate release and compensation for his unlawful detention. The Nigerian government, however, has thus far refused to comply with these rulings, further heightening tensions surrounding the case. The decision by Justice Unyako to recuse herself has added a new layer of complexity of Kano's legal battle. As a federal high court judge, Justice Uyakul has been overseeing Kano's trial for several years and her withdrawal from the case could delay the proceedings even further.